Hello friends. So today is the 8th of September 2022 and earlier today it was announced that Queen Elizabeth II of Great Britain, England, has passed away. I'm going to warn you I have dogs in the room and one of them is being a little bit bothersome. Boo-boo, you need to lay down. Boo-boo, lay down. Yeah. I know, it's hard. It's, it's hard to be a dog. But anyway, <clears throat> as I was listening to some of the announcements and stuff going on, kind of shortly after they announced that she had passed away, uh, because it just happened to be at a time and on a day when I was not obligated to be otherwise occupied. So when it started to go down, <laughs> when people started to say, wait a second, people are saying that there's something amiss with the queen, and knowing that she's very old, <clears throat> I, I paid passing attention until it was announced that she actually had passed, um, which I wasn't listening at that point I was doing something else but I was coming back every 15 minutes or so so um, just to, to see if there was any new updates and so as it kind of as I made lunch and you know I was listening to comments and as things were unfolding you know the and you know the announcement that is put up on the gates or the fences there at Buckingham Palace and all that I just felt emotional, I don't know, and, it, and that made me question. I, I mean, you can't not know about Queen Elizabeth, right? Especially since she, she keeps, you know, she just, she lived for so long. It's like she was an old lady for so long. It's like she was an old lady for my entire life is what it kind of feels like, which is not true, but... Um, <clears throat> I certainly was not aware of her until she was more mature um, and never gave it a lot of thought until, you know, was watching international events more. But in any case, she, um, yeah, she's a prominent figure. I would say certainly not a perfect person, but very admirable. Um, I, I feel that, I mean, I don't see how she could have discharged her duties in any more admirable of a fashion. Um, so, and I, you know, I remember the, the passing of the Queen Mother. I was actually, by chance, in England at that time. My mother um, <coughs> was visiting friends and I went with her. <coughs> and so I watched that, the procession with the um, with the casket and that kind of thing, in the, in with a person of British ancestry there in her house, but it's again, it's not. I'm not a, except in so far as you can't avoid it. I'm not somebody who has has any attachment to the royal family, and. So, why would I feel at all emotional or sentimental, you know? You could even take the attitude that, you know, it's at the age of 96, was it? Um, <clears throat> you know, it's a very appropriate time for her to pass and for the, the crown and duties to go to Charles. You could even say it's past time, but that's not the way it works. You keep that until you pass away. Um, and only a couple days before she had done whatever it is that she does <laughs> with a new prime minister. So, um, yes, an admirable, amazing woman, but it's not uncommon for admirable, amazing women to pass away, and I don't get emotional. And I think what I pick up on maybe is, I don't know, like the, the 
respect or honoring that people want to do for her. I don't know, but it's a big question in my mind. Why am I being sentimental? And that's what I was thinking at that moment. I think, why am I being sentimental about this? I mean, really. And I don't feel like it's the death thing. It just doesn't feel quite like that, my problem with death. And so there's that question. Why am I being sentimental? And then I recalled that I am a cancer sun sign. And people have always, you know, this is supposed to be one of our characteristics, is that we are sentimental. And I would not say that I am sentimental. But I do have like a mug that is from my teenage years. And I actually have a shirt, believe it or not, that is from my teenage years, maybe early 20s. But who cares? No, I think it was teenage, late teenage years. And so maybe I am, or am a bit of a paradox. You know, I'm a Gemini rising. So yeah, that was two don't quite fit together in terms of the sentimental aspect. Um, because I tend to be, like that Gemini rising, also quite forward thinking, and, you know, I'm usually less so as I get older, I admit. Um, but that could just be, you know, getting older and being more easily overwhelmed as I am not well. Um, well, I will say this, though, too. I've never... I have taken to technology insofar as I can see it's useful to me, but I've never been somebody who's been fascinated with the next latest thing or felt like I had to have the next latest thing. Um, so anyway, I'm going to um, spread out nine cards here, and I'm looking for a message about how am I sentimental. I feel like I need to... This was something that needed to be explored because it was triggered. So it's like, what makes me sentimental? And there it is. Five of water. Judgment. Daughter of water. I mean, I feel like I could almost stop there, but I won't. <laughs> it's like... I feel like the Five of Water is tapping into other people's sorrows. Um, the judgment could actually be about the honoring. It could be that you can't call on that person anymore. I'm not sure about the Daughter of Water. These are kind of big cards. This is the Gift of Life Tarot. Ten of Water. So here we are from the five of water to the ten of water. So maybe just even seeing people as a source of emotional security, kind of. And, you know, when you lose someone, here we go from the, from the ten to five, you know, it's like you get, it gets divided. It's like that good energy is lost from the world. And then we have the three of earth. You know, and this shows a bunch of people kind of on a bucket brigade up and down a ladder here. So it's almost like you're losing a fellow helper. You could even say a fellow journeyer. The sun. Let me move this up. The six of water. Oh, all of this water. Look at this water. Very energy here. Um, seven of water. So let's see here. We've got earth here. And we have majors here. Otherwise, it's all water. Last one. <laughs> Nine of water. Oh, so it is, it's definitely indicating that I get It's almost like I go from not emotional to, but when I am emotional, so when I've been doing counseling, to maybe give this some perspective, so when I was doing counseling, 
and I will be doing it again. It's just that my counselor, uh, there's been an interruption for uh, my my counselor's um, maternity maternity leave. She's having a baby and giving herself some time. So she suggested that I maybe was a highly sensitive person and suggested a name and a book and I said all right I will entertain that notion I think that is polar opposite of what most people who know how they would see me but I will entertain the notion that I am a closet highly sensitive person but as I read through the book I mean some of it I could see in certain moments but in the end, I was pretty much like, I, can, I know people who are like this, and it is not me. Um, it isn't that I can't tune into, and so what I wonder is if I just, if I tend to tune into, not like all emotions of everybody around me, but to Five of Cups, to feelings of loss or happiness or loss of happiness or something you know if there's something really specific that tends to trigger me but really so specific doesn't make sense because I've got all kinds of stuff here but um but I do have some polar opposites I've got the sun card and I've got the five of cups I've got the ten of cups and the five of cups I've got the six of cups six of water which of course is that happiness to do with childhood. Seven of water. Um, <clears throat> and here he's just kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, um, playing with the bubble in this card. And I could see that it's just trying, wanting to. So I think it has to do, although I don't especially see this in the cards, having to do with wanting to retain maybe things that are perceived of as good or beneficial. And I'm going to tag myself with a lack of faith that they can be replaced. That's where I think it kind of comes from. That, so it's kind of a, what do they call that? Something mindset. A, not necessarily a lack mindset. Because there is the Ten of Cups here in the Sun card. But that lack of faith that if it is lost, if what one has is lost, that it won't be replaced. Maybe it's a deprivation. Maybe it's a deprivation mindset. Not that there wasn't enough to begin with. So there's a notion of having had enough to begin with, but no faith in something being adequately replaced. I think that there is some truth to that. I can see that. Um, so you have to hang on to what was working. This is three of pentacles. You have to hang on to what was working. And what was working, everybody worked together, created happiness. So I just want to keep it, you know, I just want to, yeah, create some stasis. I almost see that in the Seven of Swords. I don't see this as being very traditional. But it's like, keep that little bubble of illusion or that little bubble of happiness. Keep it, keep it, <laughs> preserve it.
Yeah. So that's interesting. I think that that um, points to a renewal that maybe most people have or something, a renewal that I don't have in my life. And it could even be uh, connected to the fact that I am not a parent. So when you're a parent, you know, you have new generations coming up and you have renewal of both heartache and joys, right? So you have that. And I think in my work, I'm trying to think in my work, well, my work now, I would say in my work as an adult education teacher, there was that renewal. There was that renewal. There were new students, new students that as other students would pass to other classes or would decide they they knew enough English that they didn't want to continue to spend their time that way. There were always new people coming in. And, you know, new personalities. And, you know, in my current work situation, um, I'm working from home, working on a computer. There, most of the time it's only my direct boss, and since she is the boss of all, she, uh, you know, has very limited time, would be the main person I would interact with, and now I've got a partner in the actual job that I do, so we interact sometimes, but we usually divide our, our tasks. Um, that, yeah, I kind of don't have that in my life, that sense of renewal, and you know, my, my pets are, because of my health issues, I do not want to renew pets. My pets, actually, I could say, are a burden to me. They're a joy also, at times, but, yeah, they, they are, they are one of the straws on the camel's back here. <laughs> um... And so I need to think about that, and I just, before the, this video, earlier this morning, before I knew that the Queen was bidding us adieu, um, I did a video that was about um, retail therapy, deck retail therapy, purchasing decks, and how I was going to allow myself, you know, to purchase, okay, you know, occasionally give myself some retail therapy by getting a new deck. So that is kind of a sense of renewal, except that I don't need anything renewed, <laughs> because I've got plenty of decks, and it's not like I've used them so roughly that they're, you know, expiring or anything. But, it, you know, the, but there is a sense of newness coming in. So I think that's something I need to address. But that will be, I don't know, maybe a separate video. Uh, I feel like, I was just thinking maybe I could just pull a couple of extra cards. But I think, it, I think it's a separate question. So I'm not going to do that. So one thing that occurred to me. Um, I went into, so let's say this, if I wanted to, and I'm not really feeling that at the moment, but if I wanted, the question just occurred to me, if I wanted retail therapy for the passing of the queen, or just something to commemorate the passing of the queen, if I wanted to get a deck to represent Queen Elizabeth II, what deck would it be? And nothing comes to mind. So if anybody has any suggestions, leave it down in the comments. And maybe by the time this gets uploaded and people see it, which I assume, given how backlogged I am on this channel, will probably be a couple of months. Um, yeah, make a suggestion. Maybe then I'll be needing some retail therapy and um, we'll give it a go. But the other thing would be to create a spread. And I don't know that I'm 
the person. Again, you know, I have not been a Royals watcher. I don't know that much about her life. I actually, there was a question in my mind, though I suspected not because it's dicey putting a lot, a living person in a deck. But <clears throat> in terms of liabilities, lawsuits, etc. But I wondered if um, in our tarot, of that tarot of wonderful women, if she was in there, and I flipped through and know Queen Elizabeth I is, but not Queen Elizabeth II, which again didn't surprise me, but I thought, somebody who is familiar with that, so anybody who's into this, who's, uh, you know, in Great Britain, if you are aware of, admire, whatever, the Queen, or know anything about her story, that somebody should create a spread. I think she's very worthy of a spread. I think you could get some good positions, um, maybe about duty, maturity, and youth. I don't know. Um, I don't know. But it would be cool, actually, to to do a Queen Elizabeth II tarot spread to kind of commemorate her passing in the tarot community. But as I said, I don't think I'm the right person to do it. I mean, you know, I suppose I could get on Wikipedia. <laughs> but, um, we'll see. Um, in any case, I think I've finished with this video, exploring my sentimentality kind of where it comes from, where it arises from. So I will let this go, and uh, I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.